Simulated incidents on, on vol, in flight. So simulated incidents in flight. That's what it stands for. It's not a socially transmitted disease. Um, we sort of picked it up right in the beginning, just really briefly. Um, I used to test gliders for ACPLs, for the European standard, and also for the Germans, um, the DHV. And when we were all testing, we sort of, we did all this stuff to gliders um, to make sure it's safe for people to buy and to use. But no one was teaching people how to do it. We thought it would be very beneficial because we were learning a lot from handling gliders. But people didn't, no one ever collapsed or uh, stalled or recovered or learned what a spin point was or anything like that on their own. And so we thought, well, let's just teach them how to do it. So we, we started a program based on the tests because obviously tests are done in order to um, simulate stuff that's going to happen to you in flight. And so that's why a test is based on, well, what would happen if the guy applied too much brake? What would happen if the guy applied too much brake on one side? What would happen if the guy overcorrected and did this? Well, th these are the things you look for and you test. And that's what a test flight is all about. So when you look at um, air turquoise and the laboratories and their 14 tests, you can see exactly what those tests are. And we sort of pretty much base SIV, or simulated incidents in flight, on that, really. And so we have um, standard deflation tests, so deflations and all sorts of scenarios of those. Um, and then, so symmetrics and then asymmetrics we work with. Then we go ramp it up a little bit, put speed bar into the mix, make it a bit more dynamic, so how to control that in a dynamic environment. And then we put in, okay, well, we get people used to not abusing the power of a deflation and using it to settle down and balance it by having an asymmetric tuck and flying straight. Overcorrect that and you'll spin it or stall it. Not overcorrecting, you'll drop into a turn or will you? So it's all about reacting to what you've got, not to what you think you have in a deflation environment. And then we introduce a bit more dynamic and power where we do a deflation lean in, which gets you one confident with dealing with the glider in the recovery um, but also used to the nose down phase of a glider, which is a spiral dive and stuff like that. So it's subtly getting you used to things. Uh, and then we do search fours, uh, search for stalls, search for spin. And then we do stalls, uh, which are a recovery technique from a lot of things that are far worse. Uh, and then we do search for spins. So you're searching for all the maneuvers so you can recognize things before they happen. And that's important because prevention is way better than a cure. There's no point saying, ah, I can recover from this. It's, it's all about responding to it. Um, and then we do maneuverability stuff as well in the mix of the course, depending on how the instructor wishes to, to blend it all in. We then focus on maneuverability. So getting your glider to be maneuverable, um, doing wing overs is what we really focus on uh, because that teaches you everything about roll, um, about your and about pitch, all in a very fluid movement. So if you can do good wing overs, then you've really got the glide and pretty much nailed. And to test you, we do what we call a turn reversal, where you do 360 one way convert and 360 other way. And if you can do it balanced and beautifully, then you're becoming a better pilot. And so that's what SIV is. It should be a catalyst. It should give you more confidence and not in just in your ability, but in the glider's ability as well. And it's often, you know, it's the pink bit underneath that causes a lot of problems. And if you just leave it to do what it has to do, it'll generally look after you. So the first rule we have in SIV, or the first rule I have, is um, break the dive. If you break the dive in most scenarios, if you have a dive, you'll be fine. Um, and that's it. Simple as that. So rule number one, break the dive. And Anything happens, it, if it goes behind you, hands up. When it starts to go in front of you, hands down and break it. The minute the glider stops and you start to go underneath it, you're out. It's all okay. Just break the dive, okay? And then all the other lessons you learn, you don't need them because you broke the dive first of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm done. I can go now, can I? Yes. <laughs> Uh, so, quite simple. I'm just going to really quickly run you through a, th a few um, because I'm aware of I've got 40, well, 30 minutes. So, this is a real simple maneuver, okay? I'm just going to drop the sound. Oh, I can't do the volume. Where's the do though? 
So th this is a real simple confidence builder we will teach. You just fly along, pull on all A's and let them go. And it really builds up your confidence in the glider and the glider recovering. It looks lame, doesn't it? You think, oh, that's it. Is that it? Just a magic touch. And that's what we want you to feel because we want you to build trust in the wing. The wing will reinflate. It will look after you. That's what it's designed to do. These pilots have spent a lot of time um, and effort designing a perfect wing and you'll be amazed at how good they are they are so so good and it, they always get a bad reputation and it's normally the pilot that gives it you know any story we hear it's like really what happened okay so you didn't quite break that and then you over broke it and oh oh uh, so it wasn't the glider really was it because it was going to recover but you didn't let it you know and it's all that sort of stuff so it's about building up confidence in that beautiful beautiful aircraft and understanding your ability, what you can do, what you can't do, and how to recognize the point of which you're getting to the point you're changing from can to can't. And if you do, what do you do about that? And so this is what we generally teach. So here's a great example, and this is one, this is why I love these gliders, is a glider is designed, I don't know if you know this, but a glider is generally designed to, when you cock it up even, Okay, so imagine you're searching for a stall point and it drops behind, it's starting to drop behind you. Now, what pilot would let it drop behind them? Hmm. Um, you know, because it's starting to drop back and it's starting to go into a full stall. You, you release, you don't want to enter a full stall unless it's intentional. Okay, so then you release, the glider dives. You've got to break that dive, haven't you? Rule number one. Now, if you don't break that dive, providing it's a sort of controlled environment, it hasn't gone too far back, gaining too much energy, um, the glider will dive to zero degrees and it's designed to then start to deflate. And it starts to deflate at zero degrees and it, okay, it looks horrendous, it's collapsing now. And then you fall past it and as you fall past it, it reinflates. If, as long as you keep your hands up, do nothing, trust the glider, it will reinflate and fly away, providing it's a, a, a safe level glider. So that's a sort of inbuilt sort of safety valve, if you like, of the glider. And it's to help you. And this is a little demonstration of that. Just have to turn the volume down. Bang, okay. So the glider totally looked after that pilot. He went a little bit too long in the search of stall. It went back like that. And break, 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 rule number one. It didn't quite break hard enough because what happens is you get rabbit in the headlights. And you're doing this to protect yourself. Your chimp comes out and says, protect yourself. So you protect yourself rather than headbutting the leading edge and pulling lots of brake on. So that is what you should do. Break the dive. If the, if does, don't worry about it. We'll just cope. We'll cope. That's what we do best. But even then, the glider went to zero, started to deflate, allowing you to go down. Now, if that doesn't go to zero and it starts to accelerate, which is what generally acro wings and, and more dynamic wings are designed to do because they want to do infinites. They want to keep going. They want to build that power band up. Um, then it sucks you in. And if, it, if you let it go past sort of 20 degrees past that, it starts to zoop, bring you in. And that's what pulls pilots in to, um, to hit their sail. Okay, so that's one thing. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to hit your sail. So you break the dive, rule number one. Um, but if you don't, then that, off, if you bought wisely, then that's what happens. The glider looks after you. Happy with that? So that's why we do symmetric tuck. Just play it one more time. Just... Why? Just... Sort of a, uh, you terrifying perv. <laughs> so we're just slowing it down. The glider should release now. He left it too late, break, 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 didn't break, so it went to horizon, deflated, and then carried on. No course change, and that puts it into uh, definitely A class, all safe, nice glider. Okay, that's what we want. Uh, most of the tests will be an A, yeah, that'll be a, that's a B glider though, because the worst test it gets is what it gets. So you could have a glider that gets. A, 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 and then it just gets a B, and that's it, it's a B. So it's really important for you to read your test. It's all available online. You go to Air Turquoise or anywhere, and you read. Don't read all the gossip rubbish, 
okay? Go straight to the testing laboratory and see what that test pilot who really knows his stuff said about that wing. Not someone's opinion, not who's, you know, got a, you know, whatever. You get it straight from the horse's mouth. And any, the manufacturers will proudly say it to you because manufacturers are honest. They're not generally trying to hide anything. They want you to be safe and choose the best glider for yourself. Um, so you read the whole thing and you'll see, oh God, I've got A, A and that A. Oh, I only got a B, B and asymmetric deflation. I wonder why that was. And then the test pilot will say it was a little bit dynamic. It's okay, but you know, for the level of pilot it's designed for, mm, I'm gonna give that an X. And it's set by a very tight criteria of rate of turn, rate of drop, rate of recovery, power, you know, all sorts of things which will put it into the testing system. But I, I'm not gonna digress. I talk about testing too much. Enough for your porn? Okay, we've got more deflation porn coming, Jason, don't worry. Okay, so this is where we'll ramp it up a little bit. This is a speed, we've done, you know, symmetrics. So we'll do it, a, a speed bar asymmetric. Now, this is accelerating now. This is more real, isn't it? Because you're flying along, you're at speed, you're gonna pull a, an as, you know, have an asymmetric deflation happen. Boof, there you go. So, Simple as that. So all we get the pilot to do is establish at full speed, introduce the deflation, 50%, that's passed, and you use that roll energy to your advantage, okay? That is the key. So it's using that energy. Don't be afraid of that drop-in, because the drop-in, as the leading edge drops, that gives you speed. Speed gives you control, and control gives you safety. So once you've got speed, you've now got control. So it's like a bicycle. You go slow, you can't go anywhere. You go a bit faster, you're off. You can do whatever you like. And so that speed gives you that control. So you break the dive to establish protection so it doesn't get worse, and then you use the speed to get to where you want to be. So that person deflated the wing, dropped in, dive, rolled out, back on their course, back on the speed bar and win the world championship. Okay, that's what you wanna be doing. Using the energy, don't be afraid of it. Be quick to react, but quick to back off as well. Okay. So here's a, just a good asymmetric tuck. And what we do is we introduce holding the deflation in and keeping the glider flying straight. Because if you were a pilot and you saw 50% collapse, you would possibly panic, overbreak, overreact, and think, well, you know, oh my God, I've seen a massive deflation. Bang, on, on the opposite brake, opposite weight shift. And it's like, you don't need it. It's a deflation, there's no course change. So react to what you see and what you've got, not to what you think you should get. And that's a big thing. A lot of people overreact, I have a massive deflation. Yeah, I had a massive deflation, I pulled the opposite brake, and then I spun the other way. So like, ah, there you go, you've, you've overbraked it. So, you didn't need that much. So we sort of embed that in people's thinking where, okay, you've got a deflation, as long as you're really quick to opposite weight shift and opposite brake, it doesn't build up an energy into the roll. The only reason it rolls into the deflation is because your weight's been transferred into that side and therefore the leading edge drops and off you go. If, you've, if you quickly weight shift away, it won't build up that. And what actually happens is your body will swing under the good side and you'll fly under the good wing. Irrelevant what the bad wing is doing, you're now flying under the good wing. So, sort of messes with your mind a little bit, but once you do it a few times, and what we say to people on, on courses is, yeah, go on, do it. So deflation and lean away. And then they lean away, think, oh, I've got to keep it leaning away. In fact, you have to lean less and less and less because you're already balanced under the flying wing. So after a while, they have to actually start to weight shift into the deflation in order to keep it straight, which really messes with their mind. But it's about reacting to what you've got, not what you think you should have. And that's the mistake a lot of people do make. Uh, is everyone still with me? Okay, cool. All right, so what happens here? This is, a, again, this is just to illustrate how, you know, once you've got that deflation in check, you're quick to react, quick to keep it on course. You need hardly any opposite break, hardly any opposite weight shift. It's all balanced. So don't panic. That massive deflation isn't doing anything. So just be cool, Yolanda, pump it out, 
Get your, as ease off your brakes, let it dive to get balanced flight back again and fly away. Okay, don't react. So, you know, if you're flying above uh, the long mend with that, a lot of people would overreact to it. It's like, well, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. Exactly the same in thermals. You're in a thermal and you have a deflation on the outside. Is it a problem? You're in a thermal, you're going up. Does it matter? You're not spinning out of control. You're not twisted. You just keep the pressure on, keep the load on, because as you're going around, it's putting ramming air into the, to the uh, cells, and therefore keeping it solid. So when you do go to pump the brake whilst in the turn, there's more pressure to deliver. If you were to slow right down, stop, and then pump, there's less pressure to deliver. So you've got to think about your environment and think, right, I've got a deflation, I'm going up, is that a problem? No, I'll deal with that when I'm ready, about there, and keep going. Don't go, ah, deflation, course, correct, deal with it. Because then you fly out of the lift, you get into turbulent air, and you'll have a worse time. So load it up, you know, load it up. And it, one piece of advice I'd give you for those that want to fly in good thermals, strong thermals, load it up. Don't fly, whoa, oh God, because you're not loading it up. And what's happening is the glider's flying slow, just like a boat getting every wave in the sea like this, and it's going to feel everything. Whereas if you actually weight shift in, squeeze on the brakes, load up that t bank of turn, load up that pressure, you actually fly a bit more, more strong, a bit more stable, and less chance of deflations. Okay, so when it's a strong thermal, I have to say to myself, load it up, load it up, because my body's going, no, no, but I've got to load it up in order to, to keep that pressure on and just, yeah, that's it, I've got it, I'm going fast now, I'm loading it up and going. Whereas if I fly slowly because I'm nervous, I'll get a complete pasting. And then it'll confirm that, yeah, see, it was rough. It's like, it wasn't rough, it's because you weren't flying the conditions right. And that's what it's about. Okay, so... This is a little bit of your I wanted to introduce you to. Oh, not that one. This one. So we've got a big deflation coming in. Okay. One gli bit of glider goes live. Okay. Now that's the key. And that's what I want to explain to you is a deflation can rotate, if it rotates 180, then it goes up a grade. It goes to 90 and comes out, that's okay. But 180 is up a grade, even if it smacks out, which that one did. But what you've always got to think of is if you get a piece, if you have a massive deflation like that, you bring your brakes down in order to just get a little bit of pressure, not to overreact, or just to get a bit of pressure. And what happens is a piece of wing goes live. You get a piece of it reinflated, the leading edge opens, it goes a little bit live, and you've got pressure now. You've got pressure on that, so nothing on this side yet, but there's a little bit on this side. Don't over pull that side, just hold that pressure and just gently use the pendulum and your brakes to inflate, get air ramming into the leading edge and to the tips. Okay, so it's just gentle pressures. So you have to be quick, get the pressure and use it to get yourself back on track. Things like that can happen. And with speed bars, they can happen very fast. The one before was huge, um, which is why the Sigma 10 has, it's a the, pro, arguably the best glider of the year and it just has a little vice in speed bar symmetrics because it's a bit of a poof poof and you think what and it's over there and you think, What's <laughs> um, but you know just a little jab and that's when it's going up a bit of a level but if you have a massive deflation where you're expecting to go back a jab on the brake and then release stops it going back too far but it's a bit of information that you need to be clarified because if you do that and a normal deflation, you'll cause more trouble. It's all about two liners and high aspect ratio wings, which if you've got one, happy to tell you, but you don't need to know that. I think maybe we can, let's see if we can play that one. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is asymmetric. But watch the nose down. Big roll, but beautiful use of power. Big deflation, massive nose down, brake on very quickly, rolling out, harness yours, so be careful of that, and then bush, get it out. So stops it, doesn't overreact, rolls the body underneath, lets it fly again, and then delivers the pump out. See there, touching the horizon, pilot yours to 180 degrees, but still controls the wing. And that's the key, control 
the wing. Forget what you're doing, deal with the wing. You might be saying, oh, what's going over there now, is it? But you're still controlling the wing. And with a harness like that, get used to sitting up. Get your body between the melons, um, because just the same as with the ice skater, you know, when they're going around and they get the body in and they go very fast and they go out, they go very slow. Uh, this is the same effect. So your body is right out there. So you're not going to move very fast. So when that glider suddenly goes 180 degrees, thank you very much, you go, what? You're there? Well, I'm still this way. Because it's slowly, slow to go around. Whereas if you think deflation, tuck in, whoa, woof, you're out. Okay, so it's about getting your body between the melons, going with it as well. Don't be asleep. So if you have a deflation, sit up. You always get your body next to the right melons and your body in, your feet in. The thing with these pods, uh, I have one, I love them, is you feel more secure when you press against it because that's your sort of dummy. Ooh, but it's actually the wrong thing to do in certain scenarios. So that's another point. We've seen that one. Do you want to see it again? Big bar symmetric. So... Big course change, but the pilot deals with it really well. Now watch the yaw of the harness, okay? So massive drop back, lets the leading edge come over, a little bit of break, not too much, lets it stay in front and roll out. Beautiful handling, beautiful control, okay? So another thing we do is this one, and it's an introduction, one, to the power of... Uh, deflation if you did everything wrong it would still be okay but also it subliminally gets you used to the g-force of a spiral dive and the aspects of nose down okay leading edge down uh, and that's what we call an asymmetric to here so what he's doing is collapsing he's leaning into it and he's holding it so that'll never happen he goes a 360 round, it's now nose down and releases it, okay? No weight shift away, no break, nothing. Let the glider do absolutely everything. And it's out, okay? The minute you release the glider, once you're, the glider is there and you're there, the minute you release anything, the only thing that could ever happen is that. Because pendulum is gonna kick in. So if you, if you see a glider in front there and you let go, it's going to come out. The pendulum is going to climb you out. And even in a roll situation, exactly the same. And this is where people get a bit wrong because they're in a spiral, they go round and their nose down and then they let out. And then what happens is your glider needs to come out, but you also have to come back like that. So you're doing that, it's doing that. So if you, you come out like that and you try to pull out too early on a spiral, not allowing yourself to drop back and the energy to roll out progressively, you then climb out too violently and you fall past your wing. So you just let it go. Don't weight shift away from it when pulling out. Just let the energy build, let your body come underneath the wing and roll out progressively. There are ways of exiting, fast exit, which allows the glider to do it all or slow exit. And it's about getting used to that exit point. But that's how we get used to it. So if people sort of were exposed to that G a little bit too fast, well, I didn't like that then it says, okay, well, we're not going to work so hard on spirals then because you might black out. If you black out in a spiral and the glider stays in, it's not very good. Okay. Here's another, just another example, then we'll go on to the fun stuff. So, so he leans in, I and mean, what pilot would do that? None, none. So it's just really showing. Now he lets go of the deflation. Okay, so it's already coming out. Gentle opposite brake would roll that out. There he is, rolled out and gently balances it. And that's, that's what we want to see, okay? And what they're getting used to you doing is this. So he's going to drop into a spiral dive. So weight shift in, squeeze on, you can't pull too hard. You've got to let that leading edge drop a little bit, build up speed and off you go. The nose is facing down you pull out let the glider roll out and watch the pilot the pilot goes backwards gently as the glider goes forwards there's that opposite action happening okay so 
relax. And that's a spiral. And a spiral is when the leading edge is down, a tight 360 is and the leading edge is cutting the horizon. So you can just keep it in a tight 360 and it'll pull out straight away. Okay, so this is a good spiral in and out. Another great glider. So, so it's always a bit nervy because if people go a bit too hard, they'll spin it. So we have to be quite careful until they're used to it. So nice roll out, take your time, weight shift in, and now gently break it as it comes over. Did you see the way the pilot was going up that way and so was the glider going the opposite? It's just waiting for the glider to come over the head before breaking it. A lot of people think, oh, this is going to be a massive dive. I better break it now. And it hasn't come over your head yet. You've got to let it come over and then break it. Nothing is going to happen to you when the glider is behind you. It is when it's going forwards. So wait. Okay, so here's a guy that's a bit overzealous. Just practice of dropping in, that's it. Ready? 360, off you go. Oh, sorry. Shit. So well, this is what a stall is for. What happens is if you go too much and you're not listening to the glider and you haven't got a balanced approach of you and the glider traveling together and you pull too hard, you can even pull too hard in that position as well. Um, and that, you know, in a sat, that's called a coconut pulling too hard. But if you're in a spiral, is the entry where the biggest exposure is to risk when you're traveling slower and you need to build up the speed. So it's all about weight shifting and squeezing on the right and dropping in um, because in a real environment, a spiral isn't needed to get down from being sucked up. So you need to learn to get in quite quick without spinning it, but also to get out. Okay. And, and they're the keys. So yeah, that's an introduction to why we teach stalls because you know, that's, you know, yeah, he could have eased off the brakes, break the dive. That's fine. No problem. But if it starts to get messy, stalling it reboots the system. You stall it, the glider drops back, it leaves balanced flight for a while. You then ease off, it recovers and you fly away. And that's why, you know, if you're going to learn any acro moves or anything, you have to be able to stall just like that uh, and recover. Everyone can stall just like that, but no one can recover just like that. You know, you'd always, you can't turn to, you can turn to a certain degree hard before the glider spins, but you would use that element of the roll to go away from anybody or any person. So what we actually teach is when you learn that asymmetric tuck 360, that's, that's an example of it. So any 360 where your nose down or, or leading edge turning like that, you can actually pull out whenever you want. You can see your eyes and coming, there's my exit point, I'm coming to it now, bang, I'm out. And you could do exactly the same in a spiral or a tight three, 360 or an asymmetric tuck, you can, you can do that. Which is quite often what happens, you know, you, you're busy diving down, hi dude, you're diving down, you're rotating round, and you want to find your exit point and pull out. But when you get down to wires, it's getting a bit close. Okay, so here is pitch control. We now start teaching people about searching for, um, searching for stalls, searching for spins, because you need to know what it feels like when it stalls or when it spins. You need to feel, whoa, that doesn't feel right. And if it doesn't feel right, it isn't. So just get that default hands up, Break the dive, you're out, okay? So if it doesn't feel right, you're right, it's not right, get your hands up, okay? So here's, an, this is what we're teaching. A bit late, this one. So he, the pilot has to do this in his own time. We teach self-reliance. So he's gently going down, and as soon as he gets more and more pressure, and then it suddenly goes no pressure. Either his hands will go, or the, leading, the trailing edge will drop before. So here it goes, gone. So hands up, break now, beautiful. He was a little bit late, it was dropping back a little bit too far. This is the worst job. This is the worst maneuver for an SIV instructor. Just to give you, if anyone is thinking of doing it. Because we've got to let them do it 
and they've got to feel it going. So we've said it's gone, but we've got to let them feel it and let it go. And if it doesn't, if they don't let go and they go too far back, then we've got the awful decision, right? Do we say release and then break hard? Or do we say stall it, stall it, it's gone too far back. It's too dangerous to release. So we've got half a second to make that call. It's got to go from our eyes, out of our mouths, um, into their ears, into their hands. So it's, you've lost a second. So, you know, this is the one where all instructors are like, oh God, he spun it before. <laughs> so here is a bit late. So he's doing it again. So it's a uh, hell of a lot of pressure now. He really doesn't want to do it. As soon as you lose pressure there, let go. Break, break, break. But he went sideways. So now he overbroke that correction. Now he's got a big dive. Now he's got a collapse. So now he's got a bit of a problem. But he maintains course on the inflated side. So right break, rolls out. So could have broken that dive and all that hell wouldn't have happened. So there you go, that's why it's rule number one really. So this is a good example. I thought I'd show a nice modern glider. Pilot is in a race harness, he's sitting up, he's getting nice and tight and we drop the glider into the stall, we resist the bottom section where the pilot's underneath, we smoothly release, not allowing it to go beyond zero degrees, trying to keep it about 45 degrees and just letting that inflate slowly, allowing the air to ram in the centre and get to the tips. So we're going to do it again. So we go profile to camera so that he can, you can see the angles the pilot gets to. So here he goes, he's got a problem, he needs to stall it out, so he stalls it, he resists and he smoothly releases it now. And just to the horizon, the smoother you release it, the more time it's got to go into the leading edge and to the tips, okay? Now, we have to, you know, there's lots of ways of teaching a stall, but the thing with a stall is you want to reboot the system. And you can go into tail slides with two liners now, we're tail sliding more and more. But you can only start learning that when you know the forces of a stall. Because if you go into tail slides without knowing it, you'll let your hands up and it'll snatch and it'll be horrendous, okay? So, so just quickly, whilst I'm talking, just show you these ones. So that's in front, so you can let go, it's a gift, okay? If ever a glider is in front, whatever is happening, let go of your brakes. Because when it's in front, the only thing that can happen is that, you're safe. So there you go, that's a slight cravat, but watch, doesn't overreact. A little bit of opposite weight shift, get speed, and then a firm pump. So we have a sequence of uh, recovery. We either pump, we either pull a stabiliser line, but you can see it's nearly out, look, it's just trapped at the back. So what we do, so we let the cravat turn you to where you want to be, and then we have another pump, or we do a stabiliser pull, which is a tip pull, or we do an asymmetric tackle, like a big, big ear on one side, and that relieves the cravat, takes the pressure of it, and turns it into an asymmetric tuck, which you pump out. So there's different techniques, depends on what sort of a cravat that is. But we could see that as a trailing edge cravat, and not a real problem. Chucky, question, yeah. that still for a second. Some of our guys from Pan Am went to one year outside of the Yes, the and they're here. And I was nearly there, but I, I couldn't make it for his reasons. One of the things they mentioned on the stall recovery was the forces involved. Yes. And the quarter, you know, the, the forces get quite large, and, it, and after holding it, you, you, you can get through your head, you need to hold it down. But getting the force in there to hold it down can be difficult, and sometimes, you know, you... That's why, we, that's why it's, we teach, um, it's quite binary to learn the forces, because first of all, your chimp is screaming at you to let go, because you're scared. And so you have to learn to, to, to lock it on and to lock your arms on so that you resist that releasing by accident, okay? In fact, I'll show you, that was a, a good example of a restall. So a stall that goes wrong, the pilot then stall, oh, let's play it, sod it. Okay, so I've got one minute. So the pilot holds it too long. He's doing his own thing here. He's, 
He confessed he was trying something else. So now it goes into helicopter phase. That's tail slide phase there. It's aggressive, doesn't know what it wants to do. It wants to fly, but you're not letting it. So a restall, get past that point, let the leading edge get in front of you and regain balanced flight. So ease that hands up. So this is why we teach this. Right. So the thing is, there is a technique to teaching stalls where you go into the stall, you establish in a stall and you slowly, whatever happens, your hands just do this, whatever's happening. So when it goes to that aggressive helicopter tail slide phase, it doesn't matter because your, your hands are just keep going up. Then it slowly goes forward. It starts to, to dive and regain balance flight. All is great. Um, but that's not real because what we're teaching you, the clue is in the name, simulated incidents in flight. You're in a thermic environment. You've got a massive cravat. You need to get that out quick. So you drop it into the store. You resist the threat. You ease up the brakes. You gain span and you gain the recovery phase. And you're out of that exposure to risk of your glider twisting and getting aggressive in a thermal. Remember, you're still in that thermal because that's what gave you the cravat in the first place or your overreaction probably. But you're in a very turbulent environment, not in this beautifully smooth environment at SIV with no thermals or anything. So we want you out of that exposure to risk as soon, smooth and as fast as possible. So you go in, you resist, and now you smoothly release, providing friction as you're letting the leading edge dive to regain balance, flight, and inflate the tips in a smooth, progressive way. So this pilot learned that. I thought, all right, I won't do that again. So you, you do want to, um, you know, get it. So I'm just gonna show you this. This is a messy stall. Beautiful wing, a phantom, okay? So a bit messy, and then he suddenly gets composure. So he could have released there, that's okay, but oh, doesn't know what he's doing. So stall it again. So now it goes into a proper tail side. Now he eases out properly, now it inflates. It's all about that, pr that correct management of the forces against your arm. And once you get used to it, you don't have to lock your arms on. But it's better to, if you don't know, because otherwise they'll come off and <laughs> you do that. So it's all about that they become, so as you're easing off, they become like suspension, leaf spring suspension. You know, they, you're just providing, letting the leading edge dive, regaining balanced flight, but providing that friction. And as soon as it's in front of you and stopped, then you've got your pendulum to recover you. So you're out now. So as soon as it's in front, release. So if you're in any scenario, okay, if you're, it's, it's going all over the place, you see sky, 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 water, 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 hopefully. Um, if you see water, 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 or rocks, 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 if you see that, let go. Because you know that all that's going to happen is you're going to pendulum out and it'll go into a power phase, a recovery phase, where it's going to now fly, it's flying forwards, it's now flying. So if he's got a cravat, yeah, it'll pull you to the cravat, but now you know how to deal with that. Opposite weight shift, opposite brake, roll out. Let the cravat turn you to safety. Yep, now get the cravat out, you see. But you need to get it to back to balance flight as fast as you can. So you need to get it out. So here's a pilot that doesn't do this. And let's go. Wrong time. So he's got to hold a bit. His brakes are really sloppy. But he lets go. Okay, so, so his, his boot is caught because he's got hooks on. So that drops his reserve. <laughs> but he's all right. Because he's got a really simple reserve that will always work, even if it's caught in his lines. How come your voice doesn't go up? <laughs> it does, it does. <laughs> so look, there's a giant question mark. Hmm. I'll wait for the briefing. But again, that's, and the only thing that caused that was he released too late, so the glider's, because what happens is if, if the glider's back here when you release, not only is it going to dive forwards to recover balanced flight, which is what it's designed to do, your pendulum backwards is amplifying that dive. Do you see what I mean? If it's from there, the dive would be small, we've all seen, to zero and back. But when it's there, you've got your body dropping and it's swinging to cause the problem. 
So you can say, oh, I'm flying a, an A, you know, I'm flying a safe wing. No, 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 it's not safe. If you let it go back there, it isn't safe. When you let go of that, then it's going to dive. Okay, so be careful and be ready for a really quick dive and do a Superman dive like that. Not like, ba -ba 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 -ba, like that. Okay, so he's fine. Pilot's happy. All good. That's how we like it. So the next thing we do is uh, search for spin. So here's it. So we just want to, there, spun. The pilot releases, lets it dive. See how it went to zero, started to deflate, but already the pendulum was coming in, so he was out, okay? But what we teach is to use the energy to roll out in the positive way. So watch, he full brakes on one side, and as soon as it leaves balance flight and rotates on its your axis release, uses that leading edge dive to continue round, bleeding out the energy, no panic. If he suddenly pulled too hard opposite brake, he would go sailing into the sky past the wingtip. So he's had a good time. Here's uh, one good one, one not so good one. So you see it spinning? And that's a really interesting point. You've got to learn what it feels like. I've lost it. Hands up, break the dive, I'm out. Don't be afraid of spins, okay? You get them thermaling all the time, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is ease off a bit, let it dive, get a grip on the air, and get your control. So now he's just left to be it late, breaks the dive nicely, and that glider reinflates beautifully, progressively. Okay? A little bit too far. So if you're in thermals and you're going around, what are they, especially high, ratio, high aspect ratio wings, they, they can sweep back and that you can stall that wing to, not this one, this one, and you're, da -da 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 -da, you're trying to really keep it in, and it, whoop, it starts to go, then you, well, I've lost that bit. Don't be afraid, just like the asymmetric tuck. Is your course changing? Is anything threatening? Not really, I'm still going up like a train. I don't know why we say up like a train, because they don't go up like that. But anyway, so you're going around and it starts to spin. And it's spinning because you're pulling a little bit too hard or the thermal is too strong. So if you were to ease off a little bit to stop it spinning, obviously, but when it dives, use that dive to your advantage and turn tighter because that's how you turn tighter. And so you can turn tighter on the core by doing that. So don't be afraid of spins, but you need to learn what they feel like. Okay, that's why we teach it. Um, yeah. I'm just saying all the time. Okay, sorry. We'll finish it now. Um, and here's a sat that spins, but it's a good release of one. Pilot watches the leading edge, releases it perfectly. He's just got to pull it through. He pulls it through a bit too hard, it spins. So he's stalled, now it's in front. So, he's, so he's, we're going to stall it, but the glider was in front. So all is good. And it's about reading that situation, okay? Reading the situation. Don't panic. Don't panic. And here's a guy that was doing a search for spin, had a twist. He didn't panic. The clue, the, I'd say, in any uh, scenario, you always look at what the problem is and have I got height? Is it dynamic, meaning am I losing a lot of height very fast? In which case, I haven't got much time. Time is the thing that's going to stop any recovery. Or am I super high and is it not that dynamic? I, I'm not losing much height, so I've got more time. So, okay, what have I got? So you always get into the habit of have a knee-jerk reaction of break the dive, okay, or release when it's in front, that's fine, all good. Or if it spins or stalls, release, break the dive, you're all fine. But if it goes wrong, always say, right, I, I've got my recovery sort of um, technique ready. Have I got the height? I'm going to give one go, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to throw. And if you're not sure, throw, because no one dies when you throw, okay? So we'll just show, so he's... So he's doing an amp max. So he didn't release, so he's going round. So he's not releasing, so what we need to do, he's twisted. So he's 
he's gone back the other way now. But he's twisting. <laughs> so we've got loads of height, it's not dynamic, okay, the guy's got time, He's, the, the glider's not going to do any bad dive, it's in a positive rolling turn, okay, now once you're twisted with a bit of break, it actually slows the dive down, so it's starting to come out, look, there it is, and now all he has to do is, the glider is now looking after him. The when you're kicking a twist out, you have to kick violently, uh, 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 amplify your movement. So he's just having a breather. Don't do ones like that. Okay. So yeah, if you do get a twist, go above the twist and stop it going in, okay? And then once you've got that, your arms are your risers and then you can actually pull the brakes to steer. You can see that he was steering towards safety. Yep, now he's got loads of time to get it out, okay? So don't worry. Just to clear what you're saying there, so you've got a twist, so your brakes aren't working, so you're reaching up above the twist and grabbing the, the brake lines on. Yep, to get your course right. and correct. Yeah. So we always drum in course and correct. Get your course, get a safe course. So protect from danger, get a safe course, and then correct your problem. So in that process of thinking, you're thinking, of, well, am I in danger? Yes, I can't control this, I'm out. And you throw a reserve, for example. That's in the process, but it is course correction. Break the dive, course correction. That's it. <laughs>